With each new DLC, Bungie gives us a new way to fight the enemies, such as Curse of Osiris, where you could actually use your toes to beat Panoptes. Then we had Gambit Prime, the ad clear speed kind of ramped up. Now we're on Menagerie. The number of ads has totally increased and the difficulty of them. And it seems like that's the direction in Destiny and that causes for build change options. So let's get into Build the Banger 3.0. Recommended subclass Void Mid Tree as always. You got Grenade Recharge, Melee Recharge, blowing things up, healing yourself, giving all your allies next to you those same properties. Blowing them up at the melee and the doom fangs to top it off, which also stacks with it with the super recharge. Around four to six melees is a super recharge. Not bad at all. And if you need banner shield, on top of that, for you as a solo or a lone wolf, or for your entire team to blast through to kill the AI, that is what you get out of the banger. Four, four, nine. <laughs> I don't even know what this is called. So many fucking bangers. Let's get into some gameplay so you can get used to the subclass. The grenade recharges on this build range from 7 seconds to 21 seconds. I normally don't see them go past that unless it's the final ad and I'm running to another location. We're going to talk about the perks, the stats, and all that and how things have changed over it. But pretty much what the Banger 3.0 is, is you get faster recharge rates by sacrificing a little bit of mobility. But it's all worth it because, like I said, there's a lot more ads, a lot more difficult ads, a lot more tougher situations this DLC, and I figure it's only going to climb up going into Shadow Keep. So I want to make sure that my recovery and recharge are way more important whenever I have to find a way to figure out how to fit mobility in. I'm starting to not really care to even try to do it because I find myself wrecking so much harder by having those extra few seconds with abilities coming back. So. A lot of people also like to use the bottom tree with a dual shield. I tried it, I liked it, but it is only a dual shield. It doesn't really help you out as far as health recover or the ability recharge. You start suffering there, and if you have those kind of options that mid tree gives you, you might as well take those, man. Those are amazing options to have. So, now I'm using the light reactor or pump action. It's the fastest supercharging perk you can have on a helmet right now. I'm using two grenade mods, three impact mods, impact induction, traction, build it out for your own chest piece with the weapon loadout you're going to be doing. Same with the supercharged perk if you don't want to use pump action or light reactor, you still get it in a decent amount of time, just not as quick. Now as far as the recharge rates and sticking everybody with these void wall grenades, I always recommend void wall because you have that extra chance of sticking more than one target. And the more you stick, the more health recovery you get, the more recharge you get for your abilities, as well as any allies that are around you on top of that. This is why I use the large blast radius rockets, prime example in this entire area. You'll see it slay everything in here. And then if I have to use my grenade, I can get it back fairly quickly with the impact induction, plus the ability recharge from the subclass on top of it. It just keeps you running and gunning. The only time you won't have it is if you don't have any more ads to proc your abilities on to get the recharge. But you see that gap right there that there is on the grenade? You close that gap in any kind of combat by having the two grenade mods even faster than as if you had only the one. We're also going to talk about how it helps with the sentinel shield by having two grenade mods versus one versus three. Once we get to the super, I'll show you all that stuff as well. But see you through the grenade out, killed everybody, large blast rocket, got everybody but one ad. Knock him out with a fusion rifle. If we needed light reactor to proc, you get really fast supers off of light reactor. That mixed with the Doomfang pauldrons is about a 35 second super, no problem at all. The more adds, the faster the super comes back. So it's relying on you going beast mode with this build on now. Sacrifice the mobility to get these faster recharge is just way more worth it. Pop the impact induction, knock that dude out, get the grenade back. One grenade and that one rocket, that blast radius, knocking everybody out. And that is what makes Phil Prep Cluster Sleepless the king in PvE rockets. Same situation again, knock all of them out, bust a fusion out, timeline vertex going to work. Get the melee on this dude even though we don't need it. Now here's a prime example of getting health recover once we need it. Get these ads out. Clear them all, get them all nice and packaged up, controlled, impact induction. We're about to lose our shield, which we did, and now we're about to get sniped on by that big ogre, but we have the melee ready to hit on anybody just to get the health back and keep us inside the fight. 
to keep running and gunning or whatever we need to do. Just as long as we ain't dying and we're doing damage, we're good to go. Now here's where the mid-tree banner shield comes into clutch. Try to push even harder, run in on the enemy, he busts you down, put the banner up, 8 recovery with that 438 stats on top of the subclass healing abilities. And then here's where the two grenade mods gives it to you back faster when throwing your shield. So without hitting enemies, it would be 6.6 .6 seconds. One grenade mod is 8.4 seconds. And then three grenade mods, it's about a second faster at 5.6 seconds. But you don't actually gain any more extra time with your super by having three grenade mods. It does come back faster, but you won't really see any kind of gain in the super longevity, if that makes sense. You will on two grenade mods, but you will have a less super with one. But with two grenade mods, you can get 10 seconds longer super by having that come back quicker. So pretty beast mode. That's not counting if anything like Grenadier is on. Not counting if Brawler is on to always proc the Doomfang Pauldron. So it's built out for whether you want to use Demolitionist or use it for a specific mod loadout for a Nightfall. No matter what you're doing, the build's always going to remain ready to give you an ability whenever you need an ability. Now we're going to do some damage to him, call out some more adds, bust these dudes down with the Void Wall Grenade. And this is where the two grenade charge mods come in the most handy, and it's during your super. You get your Sentinel Shield back much faster, whether you're hitting enemies or not. It's faster by having two grenade mods than it is one, and that was how the original Banger and Banger 2.0 and Banger Prime were geared out. It was more mobility based, had one grenade charge mod, and by having, like I said, the two grenade charge mods, you can build up to 10 more seconds as long as you have enemies to hit with the Doomfang Pauldrons on because every time you bounce it off of people, it recharges super energy coming back to you. And the more shields you have, the better it is for the Doomfangs. But like I said, you could do the bottom tree and have two shields. But even with two shields, not having the ability to recharge and the recovery to go with it just doesn't make it worth it. But having this with the extra seconds coming back, if you don't hit anybody with your Sentinel Shield, it comes back in 6.6 .6 seconds. If you do hit somebody with your Sentinel Shield, it comes back at about 2.5 seconds, or sometimes even faster than that if there's a ton of enemies hit with it. It just really depends. But you can see right there, it comes all the way back. If you hit somebody by the melee part of it, that doesn't matter if you have any grenade charge mods on, you automatically get the throwing shield back. But situations like right here where it's starting to dwindle down, you'll notice how having the supercharge for the Sentinel is starting to pay off the lower that it gets. It comes back right when we need it because we couldn't wait two more seconds, which is what would have happened with only the one nade mod. It would have already been gone by now, honestly. But this is the extra 10 seconds that you get with it just by having that extra one on. So faster, more longer supers with the Doomfang Pauldrons, not counting the faster grenades that you get back when you're outside of your super and the impact induction proccing with the two grenade charge mods. The Doomfang charging 20 to 25% of your super, getting your super back really hell quick. Every wave of this strike, I have my super on. So it's, you know, it's back really fast. The more adds, the faster the abilities. This is kind of how it works out. But that is, bros, the Banger 3.0, the final version. Before Shadow Keep and Armor Builds 2.0 are gonna begin. So hit subscribe, become beast, much more to come, Guardians. Thanks for you tuning in and showing support that y'all have been doing. Makes me enjoy doing what I'm doing because I enjoy creating these videos and there's a bit of an intellectual satisfaction that I get from hacking these builds and figuring them out for myself as well as you all to go slay out to your heart's content. So again, my name is Ristophilus, paypal.me slash Ristophilus or teespring.com slash Ristophilus or click join to become a beast squad and gain extra perks as well. I will see y'all on the next video next time in space